Let's get this thing going. We're gonna cut the rafters to 13 feet, eight inches. These are two by eight by 16 pieces of lumber that I've had the, the big box store cut to 14 feet <laughs> so I could transport it. So do yourself a favor and uh, put two of these to the side for the front and back subfascia. I lost track of my cuts and <laughs> cut both of these too. Let's lay out where the bird's mouth is gonna be on one of the rafters. Now that we got the locations laid out, we're going to set the test rafter on the wall to see if we need to make any modifications where the bird's mouth cut should be. All right, let's cut one of the rafters and make sure everything <laughs> lines up one more time. If you're not familiar with how to use a speed square, there's an article link in the description that gives you some information on how to use that tool and also more details on the cuts for the bird's mouth. Now that our test rafter seems pretty good, we can use it as a template for the other ones. I tried a bunch of ways to cut these things out, but because they're so small, the handsaw made the most sense. We need to lay out the blocking we'll use for the side overhang. You'll need the two rafters that go on the outside, plus two with the bird's mouth cut out. Make sure you watch the orientation of your rafters with the bird's mouth. Now it's time to lay out the wall plates where the rafters will sit on the walls. We're going to install the side rafters first so that we can set up a guide for the other ones. Now we can just line up the rafters with the layout marks on the wall plates and use the string as a guide for how far forward they'll go. I'm making sure these babies aren't going anywhere by using some hurricane ties. I framed out under these side rafters before finishing up the rest of the roof framing, but I don't see why you couldn't do this at the end. Let's start by taking a 10 foot two x four and cut where the upper frame will meet the front wall. I found that using a nine degree angle works pretty good for these cuts. Scribe a line, but give yourself a little buffer whenever you cut that long angle. Instead of putting your board up there and scribing a line, you can measure almost nine inches and then draw your line back. If you're interested in the Japanese saw I'm using, there's a link to it in the description. When you're trimming it to fit, <laughs> cut the side that meets that front wall. <laughs> it's way easier than cutting that weird angle again. I ran into a bit of a hiccup with my boards because they were so twisted, but <laughs> it's nothing a little hand plane didn't fix. Measure the long side of where we're gonna put these cripple studs. Those subfascia boards are 14 feet long and a bit on the heavy side, so I'm using some guides I made from some plywood scrap. The guides in the back have a screw that help keep that backboard from sliding off. Before we put them things up there, let's mark the subfascia where they're going to meet the rafters.
When you're doing the install, sometimes the guides need to be loosened or removed so that the top of the subfascia is level with the rafters. Guides were installed to help position the side overhang rafter. All the blocking for the side overhangs were cut to 10 and a half inches and installed on the marks that we had made earlier. Last thing we need to do is install a blocking where the rafters meet the front and back wall. I did every other one to start so I could nail them in from the side. The ones that sit in between those were toe nailed in. So the smart thing to do would be to put these boards in place, mark where they meet the rafter, and rip cut them to fit. So instead of doing that, I used a hatchet and a hand plane to make mine level with the rafters. Well, I'd like to thank you for watching. Barda's Adopt-A-Shop Helper cameo is next. If you could like, share, and let me know what you think in the comment section, I'd really appreciate it. There's some social media links in the description if you want to check out some of that behind the scenes fun. Get out there and make something, and we'll see you next time.